Hi and welcome to the second episode of the Nuclear Snail channel. In the last episode you have seen me using this beautiful tool which I call the Shredder or the Zerfetzer to make the outfit look really torn. And I promised you to tell you about where to get this tool or how to make this tool or what the hell it even is. And this is what I'm gonna do today in this mini tutorial. Okay, so what the hell is this Shredder tool? Where do you get it or how do you make it? The truth behind this now it fell on my floor, motherfucker. Okay, so what you need to make your shredder tool is basically a tool which is commonly sold in any home improvement store. A so-called hole drill bit. Normal people who do not spend their time shredding up their perfectly fine looking outfits and putting dirt on them like some freaks use these uh, tools to drill large holes into wood and such. There are just two modifications this tool needs, actually just one, the second one is optional, but the one modification you have to make in order for this to work properly as the shredder is to permanently fixate those blades in place using epoxy glue. Epoxy glue, commonly known also as two component glue because of the two components it consists of, is the most potent glue on the market you can pretty much get it from any home improvement store as well. It costs actually more than the actual uh, hole drill bit, but it is really worth it and it is necessary. Because again, if you don't fixate the blades in the uh, drill bit, then they will be falling out all the time and that's annoying. So when you mix the two components of the glue by squeezing them out and mixing them a bit, and leave that on the surfaces which you want to glue for 24 hours, it becomes really rock solid. In order to clean and defed the surfaces which you're gonna be gluing together, you're gonna need sandpaper and acetone. Do not skip this step because it is really important to make the surfaces as clean and roughed up as possible, so the hold is optimal. Okay, let's do this step now, sticking together the central bit with the blades using epoxy glue. As you can see here, this uh, blade has a lot of rust and dirt on it, so we must clean it up first. For this I'm gonna take my fab glove for protection against the steel brush. And I'm actually trying to clean those grooves with the steel brush and this idea has proven to be horribly ineffective. I will show you in a moment how to clean those grooves. First let's clean this part and I cleaned it by using sandpaper, as you see here a folded sandpaper. Also don't forget to clean the insides and especially don't forget to clean those locking parts. Right here, because that's where the most contact is gonna happen. So pay extra attention to this part, clean it really thoroughly. Check out this shiny metal edge. Now we want to clean those grooves and I first tried doing this by sticking various solid objects inside of those grooves. But it didn't really help because sticking solid objects inside of holes uh, often but not always helps. What helped in this case was sticking a limp object into the grooves, namely this folded piece of sandpaper. You fold it with the sand outwards, stick it into the groove and drive it along the groove, cleaning it. Now let's uh, remove all the fat from the surfaces. For this use acetone and try not to touch the surfaces which you have already cleaned with the fingers again, because it's 9-9 touching clean surface with dirty fingers. And for this central piece I just uh, poured some acetone over it and used a piece of tissue to clean out the grooves to remove all the remaining dirt. Now it's time for the epoxy glue, the two component glue. Squeeze it out and mix it up. Oh look, a little cute wasp! Get off my lawn, wasp! No one likes a wasp! 
you were adopted, wasp. Get out of here. F***ing wasp. Alright, so mix it up. Apply it to the grooves. Try getting it into the grooves if you can. As well as to the bits. You gotta start with the smallest bit because otherwise you will have trouble attaching the bits. So start with the smallest and then go from the center. This is what it looks like from the back. You can also apply some additional glue in here as well. Alright, and after 24 hours it's gonna be something like this. All the blades in place, all the pl blades locked firmly. I actually, I don't think I can detach him, even if I really tried. Because this epoxy glue, it's really that f***ing solid. I, I, I can detach it, so it's good to work. About that second optional modification I was talking about, the way I usually hold this tool is like this. And that's pretty good already, you can pretty much work like this. But what would also be nice is to have a grip right here, which is, you know, better than this tiny surface. And what I did here for my tool is actually pretty stupid, and I will tell you how to make this grip in a less stupid way. Take some tape, any kind of tape will do. I prefer the Panzer tape, also known as the really sturdy duct tape and then you just wrap it around really many times. Alright, then you get something like this. Actually added a bit too much of the tape, so I'm gonna unravel some. And now you take a piece of garden hose and put it over. Rotating it a bit while putting it on, if it's really tight, helps. So press and rotate. And that's it. Now you have a better grip. Of course, you can do, uh, you can, uh, do something better, like adding a glue between the garden hose and the tape, or basically not using such flimsy materials in the first place, but instead taking a piece of wood, drilling a hole into it, putting epoxy glue in there and sticking it on, leaving it for 24 hours if you want a really solid grip. But this kind of grip is actually enough for me since I usually work like this anyway. Or something in between like this. Okay, that's it for now. Have fun making and especially using your own shredder tool to improve your post-apocalyptic outfits. And if you like this video then please like, comment and subscribe, also share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, then just drop me a comment or drop me an email, then I will try to answer that. Until next time, hail the snail.